Hello again. I was talking yesterday about some events during and after the First World War, as set out in a book by historian and media, media personality David Olusoga. His view seems to be that there was a good deal of racial prejudice around in England at the time of the First World War. I'm not at all sure that this is correct. Uh, I don't doubt for a moment that there were racists in the country at that time. There were racists to be found in every country at uh, all times. Whether or not England was a racist society at that time is another matter. There were certainly a few black people living in England uh, around before and after the First World War and also earlier, of course, in the 19th century. But the evidence that they were discriminated against is sparse. Indeed, the opposite seems to be true in many cases. After all, if racism was widespread, one would wouldn't really expect black people and those of Indian origin to get, be able to get white people to vote for them. Let's look at one or two instances which show how things really were a hundred years ago or more in England. The thumbnail to this video shows a black man called Alan Glaser Minns. He is wearing the chain of office of the Mayor of Thetford in Norfolk. He was elected mayor of the town in 1904. This is a bit strange, really. If the country was full of racists at that time, it would be a bit mysterious that people would vote him to be mayor in a rural town like Thetford. The explanation is that Mintz was the local doctor and he didn't make a song and dance about trying to make himself different from everybody else or to bang on about race all the time. He simply worked as a doctor and joined the local council. It does not seem from reading contemporary newspaper accounts as though the colour of his skin bothered anybody. Indeed, it's hardly ever mentioned. He did all sorts of things, attended various functions. Nobody remarked on the fact that he was black. I don't think anybody cared. The local people saw him just as their doctor and later on the mayor. His son, Alan Noel Minns, also became a doctor and when the First World War began, he joined the army and was an officer. He was a captain in the medical corps. In Olusuga's book, there is something to the effect of, just a moment, here we are. Army, the army rules said that all officers should be of pure European descent, meaning white. Um, this isn't true, but I'll go into that in a minute. Alan Glaser Minns was not the only black mayor before the First World War. In 1913, John Archer was elected mayor of Battersea in London. The first Indian MP had already been elected by that time, over 20 years earlier, in fact, also in London. Dadabai Nayara Raji was born in Bombay and elected as MP for Central Finsbury on July 6, 1892. Again, nobody seemed to care all that much about the colour of his skin. Returning to the idea that the British Army during the First World War, um, Olusuga's idea that, and I quote, giving weapons and training to black men from the colonies and sending them to fight Europeans went against the colonial rule that black people should not be permitted to kill white people. This is pure bunkum. I mean, the... French had thousands and thousands of black troops from Senegal over a colonial power. I've never heard of this basic colonial rule before. I read mention of it by Oli Soga. OK, it doesn't seem to hold water. There were a number of black people from the colonies, as he puts it, and also black officers in the British Army. There was no part of black men being officers. I cannot help but wonder if the author bothered to consult the War Office's Manual of Military Law from 1914, which I've been looking at over the last few hours. One suspects not. Lieutenant Reginald Collins, Jamaican, served in the 19th Battalion of the Royal Fusiliers, 
George E. K. Bemmer, born in Jamaica in 1892, was a second lieutenant in the Royal Field Artillery, and there are others. Black men were also subject to conscription when it was introduced in Britain in 1916. The Aberdeen Press for 6th of March gave details of a black man who was accused of failing to register for military service at what we would call dodging the column when I was a young man. Uh, he appeared before a tribunal in Stockton about this and he was granted a three-month exemption from the draft because he was working for a circus and he was in sole charge of five lions and two wolves. The Yorkshire Evening Post, the 20th of June 1916, reported that a 38-year-old black man called Harry Spencer who had been living in England for 11 years was charged with failing to register he undertook to join the army immediately. There was no earthly reason why black men shouldn't fight alongside white people or why they should not bear arms against Europeans, nor that only white men should be officers. I honestly don't know where Oliver Stoker is getting his information from. Nothing I've seen indicates that there was much in the way of racial discrimination as far as the army was concerned, or indeed when it came to selecting MPs or mayors. Uh, before and after the First World War. This was when black people or those of Indian origin were not all that numerous and they simply got on with their lives and did not demand special treatment. It was also before mass immigration took place when men feel that their jobs are threatened or their country changing rapidly because of an influx of foreigners then that can create prejudice and trouble often results. The idea that England was full of racists a century ago, though, is not really supported by all that much evidence. <laughs>